difference between reacting and responding? And why is it important to know? Hey guys, it's Vanessa V. Welcome to my channel where we discuss reigning over your life, conquering what's holding you back, and living life in victory each day using simplified strategies that work for you. Today we're talking about something that I've wanted to talk about since literally the beginning of this channel, but other stuff kept popping up because you know, hashtag pandemic. So uh, that's what we're getting to today. Uh, I mentioned it, I believe in last week's chat uh, because it did have to do with what we were talking about. But for me personally, I feel like this really has a lot to do with how we feel our stress and worry and panic and all that stuff. Uh, and, and also just being able to feel like we can control it better. Because I think a lot of times when we experience those feelings and, uh, and, and, and what that tries to take us into and pull us into, it can sort of make us feel a little bit out of control of ourselves and how we feel and how we think and all that stuff. So it's a really important topic. And so I'm really looking forward to talking about it today. FYI, by the way, I am filming two chats in a row. So you'll probably either notice with the next chat that I post or you already have noticed with the chat that I've already posted. I'm not sure which one to post first because honestly, I cannot think. If you're uh, noticing, I'm I'm only using one hand. <laughs> this arm is um, not functioning right now, as you can see, because of something that occurred that hopefully I will be sharing with you next week. Um, but I have not been able to brush my hair. Nick's been brushing and braiding my hair. Uh, he's also been applying deodorant to one armpit because this armpit is inaccessible at the moment. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of husband training this past week, and he's been really sweet about it. But I am tired. I have had a reaction to the meds that I was on. And so that was kind of rough going yesterday. I'm not sure how much editing I'm actually going to be able to do. I did have to edit last week's chat with one hand. It kind of took me a little bit extra time. I don't want to have that this week. I really need to focus on relaxing and chilling out. But I wanted to share this with you guys because it really does have to do with what we've been talking about. But also because of this little thing going on here that I will hopefully share. I think I said that. Anyway, let's get to it, okay? When I was, I believe I was in fifth grade and there was a boy who was teasing me because I was not fit or thin. He he laughed at me. I think he went like, ha ha ha, you're fat or something like that. And I reacted instantly. It was one of those beautiful moments, you know, when someone's being mean to you and you know exactly what to say. And I said, well, at least I don't wear braces. And his face, oh God, I get emotional. I, I could tell I had hurt him like deeply. And I felt so bad for him. I did. I like, I feel tears right now. I, I just, his face and his reaction were not what I was expecting. And I remember feeling really ashamed of myself, kind of proud, <laughs> but it, really more than anything, just so ashamed that I had sunk to his level, that I had made him feel bad. And, and I really, that was a turning point for me in fifth grade, was to really try to not react out of turn, I guess is how I put it in my head. Um, and to therefore re respond instead. So reacting, basically what reacting is, in my humble opinion, is an emotional survival reaction to a trigger that we receive. Our brain that we talk a lot about on this channel basically receives a, a trigger, a, a danger stimuli, and it activates that subconscious brain into survival mode. And that tends to take over or try to take over in order to keep us safe. And when that occurs, especially if we're not very aware of it, we tend to react. Uh, and, and when we react, there's a lot less thought going into it, a lot less rational thinking. Uh, there's more confidence. Uh, there can be more or less energy depending on our fight, flight, or freeze response to that trigger. It tends to be quick 
It tends to be uh, based in irrational thinking. And basically at the end of the day, it's a defense mechanism. It is it is there to keep us safe. And basically it's it's emotionally driven. Say road rage, <laughs> uh, say someone has cut us off and they didn't even wave to say thank you for cutting us off. That for some of us, including myself, can be very triggering and upsetting. It is a dangerous situation logically, right? However fast or slow we're going, driving can be a very dangerous thing to do. And by your actions, you are literally causing me to be in an unsafe situation. You're being possibly selfish, reckless, careless, whatever it is, that is a very triggering thing to my, my, my life and my safety. And so for many of us, we may or may not even notice that we are being triggered or having a survival mode type reaction in this situation. And when we react to the situation, for many of us, it can be jumping into a survival mode state, whether that's fight, which can look like more energy, more anger. We talked about that in a previous segment. I will link that below. We might say stuff. This guy might come out. Hi. If we're feeling flighty or freezing, uh, we may react a little bit differently by either avoiding, slowing down, trying to hide in the herd of other vehicles. There's lots of different ways that we can react to a situation that's triggering. And basically when that's occurring, things can seem very black and white. There's not a lot of gray zone, like I, I like to call it. Perhaps we're catastrophizing or magnifying the situation or the trigger. We're oftentimes not listening. We can be very tunnel visioned. We can assume a lot of things or fill in the blanks for stuff, especially when we don't have all of the information. And we can sort of demonize other people or sort of make it an us versus them situation. And it can really increase those stress, worry, anxiety, panic, anger feelings that we may have because of this uh, particular trigger. And even though a lot of, what's wrong with my hair? There we go. Um, and even though a lot of these um, feelings or thoughts or reactions can sort of call to us and talk to us and um, sort of guide us, we start to feel as though this is a very logical thing to do. At the end of the day, it's a very autopilot thing to do. And I know for a lot of us, we can feel really guilty later on. Uh, we can sort of go, oh my gosh, that wasn't me. I can't believe I said that or I acted that way. But it totally makes sense. It helps us feel safer. It helps us feel more confident, more stronger, more protected. And sometimes if we don't understand what's going on uh, or if we don't have other coping skills because it is a stress hack it's a coping skill and it can be a habit for a lot of people even though it's not necessarily a healthy stress hack or coping skill because it sort of feeds into what we're feeling it can be very easy to buy into especially when we don't have healthier options or don't understand what's going on responding on the other hand is a form of reacting however it's more thoughtful it's more of a mindful reaction. It's not uh, as emotionally driven, it's more rationally driven. So the act of responding, the fact that it, this is sort of a process that takes a little bit more time, that involves accessing that rational thinking, and so the way that we react to a situation or a trigger in more of a response reaction tends to reflect the values and who we actually are and how we see things much more accurately. So for example, road rage, <laughs> somebody cuts us off. Again, we may or may not notice the survival mode reaction. It can either just roll off of our back or if we do notice that we're having sort of a survival mode reaction to this negative trigger, when we are activating that response reaction, Oftentimes, at least for me, using stress hacks and coping skills that I've practiced and dropping as much stress, worry, anxiety, panic, anger, all that stuff, just trying to really reach a baseline. I'm not trying to react. I'm not trying to uh, mom the highway or the other drivers. I'm focused on me being centered and more balanced, where I know I will then be able to access my rational thinking and be able to more calmly and rationally 
think, consider, and have more balanced decisions. And what that can look like for some of us is either still having this guy come out, but it's much calmer and more in control. We're not speeding, we're not shouting, we're just sending a friendly reminder that they may wanna drive a little bit better. Hugs. Others, and what I tend to do, is uh, just let it go. It's not my job to mom the world, right? It's my job to make sure that I'm driving safely, that I'm not escalating the situation. And I also <laughs> will uh, pray for them because anyone that's driving like that, there's, there's something going on. So I just, you know, if they're speeding or if they're driving recklessly, I just pray for them. And one thing I've noticed is that the, the more that I've done that, the more that I've actively really tried to just keep an eye on it, because again, reacting is very natural. I hope I've been using these words correctly, but reacting is very natural. Responding is not as natural. It takes more time. It goes against that initial knee-jerk reaction that our brain is trying to use to keep us safe. And it does take a lot of patience. It asks us to work on that patience. And it can feel very scary because of all of those things. Um, and, and it also asks us to check our ego. And it reminds us that we don't always know everything. And our perceptions of things are not always entirely accurate. One of the things that I, I really like about it is that it allows me to feel more in control of that roller coaster that PTSD can send us on or stress and worry and anxiety and panic and anger. All the feelings, all the reactive feelings can sort of call to us, speak to us, say to us, and try to bring us on board with. It really helps me check those feelings, check those thoughts that those feelings bring with them, uh, check the actions that those feelings want me to act upon. When we're feeling so bogged down by those things and they seem so logical, it can be really easy to buy into them. Another thing that I love about this is that it allows us to let other people be human. It, it allows us to not expect perfection from other people uh, or from ourselves when we apply this to ourselves. And that, that's something that I never used to do before being diagnosed with PTSD. It was so easy for me to respond to other people, to sort of understand where they might be coming from, to see different points of views, understand their possible intentions, all of that stuff. But when it came to myself, I was so hard on myself. And I really just did not give myself a lot of wiggle room to uh, be human. And this allows me to do that, not just with other people, but with myself. It allows for more listening, more active listening, more discussion. It again, considers other people's intentions. It's such a huge thing for me. Going back to the sort of demonizing or uh, making other people out to be the bad guy in certain situations uh, that I mentioned with reacting, when we respond, we're much less likely to do that. We're much more likely to really digest the situation, see from their point of view, perhaps consider what their intentions were, um, and, and to have just a more well-rounded, thoughtful read of the situation and the trigger. So it increases our clarity, our understanding, it decreases our stress, worry, anxiety, and panic and anger. At least that's what I found. And it also just decreases regrets that we might have because we're not allowing ourselves to go on the attack or avoid and make decisions that aren't necessarily based on what's best for us and everyone involved. Or else all we're just gonna do is just react to each other. And that's not really gonna lead us anywhere healthy, <laughs> and it's probably just gonna create negative memories for everybody involved. There you have it. It really, at the end of the day, it just helps us to see through the emotion, to see around the emotion, around the, the firestorm that has been sparked, to, I think, see the reality that actually is, not the reality that our perception is creating. Okay, that's it. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna remove this, I'm gonna chill out. I can't wait to see you next time. Thanks for hanging out with me. Send me all the vibes for this. Just all the healing vibes, all the awesome vibes. Hey, I'll see you guys next time. Mwah. Bye.